What started out small has now grown very big and sort of out of control. <laughs> well, the annuals are great. They give you a big pop of color in the summer, but then they disappear. Perennials come back year after year after year, but when they come back, they get bigger year after year after year. And see, that's what happened here is you have some plants that just outgrown the space. Right. You've got a daylily here that must have had a nice pretty flower on it. This is Sedum Autumn Joy. This is a beautiful fall flower. And this looks like a lily, and it must have had a lot of flowers on it, judging by the seed pods. It did. Now, what we should do is take all these perennials out, divide them into little pieces, and move them around. In fact, we probably create a bed over on the back side over there. So the first thing we want to do is dig them all out. While they're out of the bed, we might as well take a look at this fence and see if we can do something with that. Sounds good. Now, in order to get all these plants out of this bed, we're going to use a transplanting shovel. And it's a steel blade that's usually sharpened on the, on the bottom end. And it's good because it can go down under the plants and then help us cut the roots and lift the plant up. Okay. So just take that. What you're going to do is try to get it in as deep as you can. And then lift up a little bit and work your way around until you feel like you got a big piece of daylily coming out. See something like this? That's a division right there. See, we'll replant that and that'll be a whole new plant. Okay. So you should be able to get them even bigger than that. Well, the best thing I can tell you when you're trying to get these out is to cut all the way around them and then pry them up. You want to cut all the way around so you don't rip any of the roots. They get cut nice and clean. There's a couple little ones there that take this one right out for you. That's not bad. Great. Not bad at all. I got a big one coming out right now. Right there against the fence. One more time. There you go. Oh, that's pretty much almost all the day lilies. What we're going to do is just fold the top over them to keep them from drying out. Ah, oh, perfect. Kim, with all the plants out of this bed, this is the perfect time to paint this fence. But I wanted to show you something before we start painting. Take a look at these pickets down here. Now, they're down into the ground. See how they started to rot already? Oh, wow. They're also wicking water up the picket, and that's going to cause the paint to fail. OK. So what I'm going to do is come in and cut about two inches off of these pickets. OK. But while I'm doing that, I want you to start scraping the fence down. Now, you're going to use one of three tools, a wire brush, a triangle scraper, or a putty knife. Does one work better than the other? In all honesty, you'll probably use all three to get this fence in good shape for paint. Okay. Why don't you take the wire brush and start working Let's on that? Start it. And I'll start cutting these off. A water base solid body stain. It should stand up pretty well. It looks great. Kim, we're lucky because all the plants you have here, they can be divided. Being divided means you can break them apart and you'll still get the same exact plant. You look in here, see these little eyes? Okay. That's what makes the plant divisible. So you can go through and cut it into different sections, and those eyes will become new plants next year. Sounds great. Now, when we divide a plant, it's kind of fun because you don't have to be too fussy about it. We're just going to take the spade, go right through. Let's take a look at this. Now, that is a pretty good clump, and that's ready to go back into our perennial garden. Okay. The foliage on these daylilies is already starting to fade, and it's just going to turn brown. Once I get it cut off, I'm just going to divide them up into different sections. Great. That's good to know. Yeah, that should make it a little easier to work with. Now, I like to find a flat side and just set them down. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Okay. Now, if you would take those two and put them right behind the fence. Got them? Got them. All right, Kim, you put that daylily right in front there. This one's going to go right here. 
Okay. I always like to lay everything out to make sure I like the placement before we start planting. Now the good thing about these perennials is they have a very shallow root system so we're not going to have to dig a really big hole. Now all I'm going to do, Kim, take a little bit of starter fertilizer and just work it into the soil. Now I just want to make sure that we set this at the same height as it came out of the ground. We don't want to plant them too low. And with this good soil, all I have to do is work it around the plant, and then we'll be on to the next one. Kim, the perennials look pretty good. They're a little beat up from all the work we did, but they're gonna be even prettier next year. But the one thing I notice is that all your plants are late bloomers. You're not gonna have any color until midsummer or after that time. Okay. So I wanted to add some color to your garden early, and I'm gonna do this by adding these crocuses, which flower really early, and then some daffodils, which will follow right behind those. And then we're gonna put in some alliums. This is a fun bulb I love to use. This bulb will put a shoot out that'll get three feet tall and have a big, big eight inch flower on it. That's great, what color will they be? It's gonna be purple. Perfect. Now what we have to do is we have to dig a hole two and a half to three times the height of the bulb. Once we do that, we put in a little bit of starter fertilizer and mix that in the bottom. Then we're going to take and set the bulb with the point side up. Okay. I just set it in, snug it in, push the dirt back in on top of it. We're ready to go to the next one. Now what I want you to do is take these daffodils and plant them in a clump like this. Okay. okay? So you got to dig a hole and then put them in and I'll put some of the crocuses out for you to plant too, okay? Okay. Now you notice that we're planting these in clumps. I like planting all my bulbs in clumps. It makes them look more natural when they bloom. There you go. And I'll put some soil on top of those and you can start on these crocuses I've laid out. We're going to spread a two to three inch layer of pine bark mulch in the beds. Okay. Don't cover the plants, try to go right around them. There you go. All right, let's take a quick tour of what we ended up with. We have two azaleas on either end, a sedum autumn joy in the middle, and around it we have three dwarf daylilies. And in between we have scattered all our spring flowering bulbs that are going to look terrific. I think it looks great. Matches the rest of my house, neat and clean. I'm happy. I love the sedum in the middle. I can't wait to see what it looks like in the spring. But remember, the perennials are going to grow, and after three to five years, you're going to have to divide them again. I won't forget. Thanks again, Roger. You're welcome. I had a great time. Thank you.